Today, I'm gonna talk about turn-by-turn -turn navigation on the Polar Grit X. Can you feel the same? 9.4 miles, 9 minutes, 35 seconds per mile, 135 beats per minute today, taking it nice and easy as I head out for my run and making kind of an attempt at some Strava art with the help of the turn-by-turn -turn navigation on the Polar Grit X. Now, before I talk about how it went and how all these things work together, I do want to go over some disclosures. The Polar Grit X is a watch that was sent to me for the purpose of review, so I didn't have to pay for it. However, no one's paying me to make this video or to use the watch, and no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my thoughts or footage until you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So the idea for today was that I was going to uh, go on a route that it's a little bit different or a lot different than what I normally do. Normally I've been making several small loops around where I live. Uh, all my normal running routes are closed down for the moment. And uh, so rather than do my normal loops, the, where I kind of know where to turn, I mapped out a different route, something with a bunch of different turns that I would have to go over so that I couldn't memorize the route by any means and I have to rely solely on the watch. And that's what I did today. It was supposed to be a little bit more than 11 miles for the route, but right at the outset, I forgot that I would made a couple of different loops for the day and I forgot which one I had ultimately set, settled in on. And I just kind of blew past the first turn that I was supposed to make. I was supposed to go north for about a total of three miles and then loop back down towards the second part of the run which is where I had gone. And so I guess from the outset, that's part of the strength and the weakness of the way that the Polar's turn-by-turn -turn navigation worked is that uh, it didn't tell me that I'd missed like my first like third uh, of the route. And instead, because that route like looped around and I was at that loop around point and started going towards like this kind of the second portion of the run, it had kind of assumed, okay, uh, I had decided to cut out that part of the route and it picked up right at that second part. And so like the nice thing about it is you can set up a route and you can have a plan, but if you need to change that plan like on the day or when you finally get out there to the trail or to the route that you're on and want to pick up at a certain point in the route, um, it's not going to be like, hey, go back to point one, go back to point one, go back to point one. It's going to say, oh, you're at point like 15 uh, out of 45. All right, we'll pick it up from point 15. So that's what it did. Uh, so a lot of user error on my part. I probably, if this were real life and I was using the turn-by-turn -turn guidance, would have reviewed the route one more time before I'd actually gone out on the run that day, but I kind of just made the route the night before, woke up and just kind of went. When you set it up, uh, it not only uses your GPS on the watch, but it also uses the compass that's built into the watch as well. And so it, whenever you're running on it, um, you can see on your watch like where you are in regards to the route and you get to see a little bit ahead of you in terms of what's coming up soon. The compass and the GPS are working together to make sure you're staying on the exact same path. Once the route guidance did pick up, I had a bunch of turns set and that was intentional again to make sure that I was going to have to make a lot of turns and it would be really obvious if I missed a turn. It gives you two notifications, one when you're about like 100 feet away from the turn and then another one when you're at the turn and it'll tell you like turn right, 
turn hard right, turn soft right. The ultimate thing for me being like, I get lost when I'm ever I'm running in a trail. Anytime I'm in a park, anytime I'm somewhere new, I usually get lost. So I just wanna be able to make sure that like something tells me at the right moment when I need to turn. I've tried running with just like my phone using like Google Maps before, and I find that like it tells me to turn or it tells me I'm at the turn like too soon or too late. Like the resolution just isn't fine enough. The resolution on the Grid X seems to be just right. It works for me. I hit every single turn that I was supposed to hit. There were times when I was running where I think based on like the way I was facing or whatever, like maybe I was looking around at traffic or whatever, um, it would tell me, it would give me a notification that I was looking in the wrong direction or about, I was about to turn in the wrong direction. It does let you know uh, in a persistent way that you're doing that. So I was able to like, oh, I'm going in the wrong direction. The one thing that I did have to do differently for this run was that I didn't have music in. So I usually listen to an audiobook, a podcast, or listen to music as I was running, but I wanted to make sure I hear, heard all the notifications from my watch. You get kind of two kinds. It'll vibrate and it'll bing at you. Uh, and a lot of times when I'm running, I don't notice that vibration um, while I'm running on the wrist. And a, another thing that I've noticed is a lot of times I won't hear uh, the chirps or the bings that the watch makes if I have music in and it's loud. And then in terms of the route, I ended up having a little bit of extra time because I had chopped off like a third of the route for today. So I did run a little bit extra. Uh, that wasn't part of the route. When I got to the end of the route, it let me know I was at the end of the route and it kind of stopped like doing the navigation thing. So it's not like the compass is trying to tell you like, hey, here, here's how you navigate back to the end of your route. It's just kind of done, which is nice because a lot of times I'll have a route, but I might have to run to the starting point of the route uh, or I might want to do additional running afterwards like I did today because I had a little bit of extra time before I needed to head back home for the day. So I was able to tack that on. So now let's compare kind of like the intended route versus the actual route. And you can kind of see the like the difficult or like the more like navigationally difficult part of the route, at least for the part where I was on the right path uh, and I hadn't accidentally inadvertently cut off the first third of my route. It worked out pretty good. So how did I make all that? How did I get that into my watch? How did I get all that together? Um, it's uh, you make the route in commute. K-O-M-O-O-T uh, is the app that you're gonna use. You're gonna have to sign up for an account there. Uh, there are like paid uh, and pro level accounts that are available. Uh, and the, basically what that does is that enables you to get like maps of specific areas. When you sign up for an account for the free level account, that's what I've used for today so far, um, you get access to one region. And I picked my home region uh, to be able to use. And then um, when I, save that route, uh, I would sync my watch to the Polar Flow app on my phone. And as I synced that, I suppose I could also have synced it to the computer, but as I synced my watch to the Polar Flow like data base, uh, wherever my account is, then it integrates with the Commute app and that pulled that route that I just made into my watch. And then when I go to start my activity, instead of like just hitting start for start the activity, there's that little icon, there's a gear icon in the upper left-hand corner that you can click on that. And then I was able to select my route uh, in the like the maps and routes section from there. So I had like a couple of different routes that I had made and I had a couple of different ones to choose from. And I picked the one that I'd made specifically for this like run test. I was able to click on that and then start the activity and then the route guidance uh, was there. I did have to calibrate my compass, which I think is something that it makes you do every once in a while. I don't think it makes you do that every time, um, but that also just makes sure that like when you're like looking at your watch and trying to like figure out, do I turn that there or do I turn here? Um, that just gives you a little bit more accuracy. So having it calibrate the compass is pretty nice. It doesn't take too long, but it's a lot of like, weird mo mo movements, it's a little bit awkward, um, but it's not something you have to do every time. Making the routes on Commute was a little bit difficult. Now I've done a couple of other like route making apps before. The one I typically use whenever I'm kind of exploring a new city is uh, Map My Run, because uh, that's one that I'd used uh, for a long time before I even had uh, started using running watches. Uh, that's how I would kind of figure out how long my runs were, is that I would go run somewhere, and then after the fact, try to remember where I had run and use map my run for that. Um, and so I'm very familiar with how that works. And the, the difficulty with a lot of these um, mapping apps is that you kind of like tell it, like here's the different places I had been. 
and you hope that like from point A to point B that you've like clicked on that it tracks and follows a route that is similar to what you actually ran or in this case what you hope to run. With Commute, I found it a little bit harder for whatever reason, like sometimes it usually happened when I was on a busier street. Like let's say I was trying to like go on Lincoln Avenue from like, I don't know, like from Fullerton up to Diversey. That's a diagonal street. Um, if I wanted to just go that a little bit more than half mile, I could click on one point and click on the next. And for whatever reason, instead of it making me go on a diagonal path, it would have me go like, oh, maybe you wanted to go this way. And sometimes it was really annoying to figure out like how to get it to just stick to the main road. So I had a lot of times that I was just fighting the app and not getting used to it. I think part of that's just the learning curve. I'm not as familiar with the Commute app. I've only been using it for a handful of days, but I think part of it is just that the app is a little bit like cumbersome to use in that regard. I think that it's probably not uh, optimized for people that are using it to like make Strava art uh, in urban areas. It's used for people that are going on like 100 mile bike rides or running out in trails where there aren't too many uh, options for commute to have to decide between. Um, so I had some difficulty dealing with it. Um, it's difficult enough that I don't even like making routes on my phone. When I wanted to make a route, I was like, I can't do this on the phone. I got to go and sit down at a laptop and do it because the desktop interface was a little bit easier to use and kind of avoid that kind of like the root stickiness problem. If it just wanted to do what it wanted to do and not where I wanted to tell it to go uh, a lot of the time. So I was a little bit frustrated by that. Hopefully that's something in the user interface that can be improved, but ultimately it gets me where I need to go. I look forward to the time when I can start venturing out a little further away from kind of my home base in terms of going out for runs and activities. Um, Cause I'd like to be able to put it on some trails and see how it does there, like on my normal like front route. Uh, like if I were to go to parks of the type that I would normally get lost in, um, I'd like to be able to test that and I will once like things in conditions improve, I guess. Um, but for the meantime, I did it in the area where I am, which is an urban area and it did really well. Um, some user error issues that certainly happened, but in terms of it being able to navigate me, even someone like me who gets hopelessly lost all the time, it did a fantastic job. So it's not something that I think I would use every day, but I think it's something that if I were to either make Strava art or if it's something where I'm going and traveling for work, uh, run, I mean like, it's hard to think about run tourism now, uh, but that's something that I would love doing anytime I was traveling anywhere for work. I'd love to go on a run, kind of just explore the area that way. It's a feature that I really like, uh, a feature that has been working well for me. And uh, I just wanted to let you guys know about it as I'm testing a lot of the different new features that are available on the Polar Grid X. So those are my thoughts on the turn by turn navigation on the Polar Grid X. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions. I'd love to talk about it more down there. Uh, that's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hope you're getting your runs in and staying safe, and I will see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?